Hello everybody, in today's lesson we're going to be talking about nth roots and rational exponents. Let's really quickly um, find an example of what a rational exponent notation looks like. So a rational exponent notation or an expression with that would look like this, 2 raised to the 1 -fifth power. Um, if you wanted to write that as a radical notation, what you would do is write, rewrite that as the fifth root of 2. And it's actually raised still to the first power here, um, and that's where that 1 is coming from. So basically what ends up happening is that the 1 is the power, and the 5 is the root of our rational exponent. All right, let's kind of continue on. In example 1, what they're going to ask you to do is rewrite the expressions using rational exponent notation, so very similar to this first one that we looked at. And that means that the radical needs to go away. Now, in a square root, the the root is actually a 2, although we don't write it, every mathematician knows that. And so when we rewrite that as a rational exponent, we write the 11 first, that's the base, and we have the exponent as 5 over 2. So it's 11 raised to the 5 halves power is how we would read it. Let's go on to the next one. We have, once again, the base is negative 42, the power is 2, and the root is 7. So that would be negative 42 raised to the 2 sevenths power. Let's continue. We have, once again, the base is negative 10. Uh, the power is 8 divided by the root, which is 3. So therefore, it is negative 10 raised to the 8 thirds power. All right, let's continue. Now we're going to work backwards in example number two. And instead of rewriting the expressions to rational exponents, we are going to rewrite them as radical notation, which means we should see a radical symbol, such as a square root, a cube root, and so on. So let's go ahead and look at this. Once again, the three is the power and the four is the root. And I always think about a root of a tree. The roots are in the bottom, so that's how I remember that. We know that the base is eight, and we know it's the fourth root, so we're gonna put the fourth root raised to the third power. So fourth root of eight raised to the third power is what we would rewrite that as. Um, same thing, our base, again, here's negative six. We have a root, that's a cube root, and it is raised to the second power. So we have cube root of negative six raised to the second power. Last one is 43 is our base. Once again, five is our root, so we have the fifth root raised to the first power. Now you do not have to write that. You can actually just leave your answer as fifth root of 43. Every mathematician knows that there is a one there. But if you like to, um, so you don't figure out about the powers, you are welcome to write it. Now, in example number three, it says find the indicated real nth roots of a. What we're going to do is actually figure out what the final answer is. So I'm going to rewrite these as nth root, so that's the fourth root, because we have four here for n, of 625. So what that means is we need four of a kind. So I'm going to go ahead and break down 625. I know that 25 times 25 is 625, and each 25 breaks down to 5 and 5. That means that the fourth root, and these are still underneath the fourth root, is equal to 5. So the fourth root of 625, final answer, is equal to 5. Very similar to this idea of a square root. For example, if you had square root of 25, we always wanted two of a kind. And we said, since these are still under the radical, it's equal to 5. Well, the reason for that is because the root was a 2. But we call it a square root. All right, let's look at the next one. We have a cube root of negative 27 is what we want. Um, once again, this is coming from the third root of negative 27, as stated above. Okay, so uh, we have the third root of negative 27, which means we need three of a kind. Well, I know 27 can break down to, um, I'm going to ignore the negative for now, 9 times 3. And these break down to 3 and 3, and this 3, I'm going to just bring it down so they're all at the same level. Well, I know a negative times a negative times a negative is still a negative, so that is 
three of a kind. Therefore, we know that the cube root of negative 27 is going to equal, ooh, I can't reach, is going to equal negative three. So that would be our final answer. All right, let's go into example number four. Now it says, evaluate these expressions without using a calculator. And in the examples later on, we'll kind of show you how to do that with a calculator. A cube root of eight just means three of a kind. So we're gonna go ahead and do two times two times two is eight. Therefore, the cube root of eight is two. And I know most of you already knew that and had that memorized, okay? A fourth root of 81 just means how many of those do I have, uh, how many four of the same number do I have? Well, fourth root of 81 breaks down to nine times nine, which also then breaks down to three times three for the first nine, and three times three for the second nine. Therefore, a cube, fourth root of uh, 81 is equal to three. All right, we have fourth root of one. Um, well, we can rewrite fourth root of one as one times one times one times one. There's our four of a kind, therefore the fourth root of one is one. And we could do the same thing with the negative eight raised to the one-third power. Now we can rewrite this. We know that the power is one, and we know that the root, which is always in the bottom, is three. So we have the cube root of negative eight raised to the one power. And like I said earlier, you don't have to write the one power. I'm gonna go ahead and break down the eight. So we have the cube root of two times two times two is eight, and each one of them can have a negative. Because a negative times a negative is a positive, times another negative is a negative, which is what we want anyways. So cube root of negative eight is going to be negative two, because we have three of a kind, and there's nothing left over. Now, it is still negative two raised to the one power, but anything raised to the one power is still itself. Therefore, we can leave it alone and say it is just negative two. All right, let's continue on. Now it says we are going to evaluate these using the calculator. Go ahead and pause me for a second and let's take out our calculator. All right, I'm back. I just took out my calculator as well. So in order to put this into the calculator, what you have to do is type in, and I like to use parentheses. Um, I know that the 126 is in parentheses, so I'm just going to be on the safe side and go ahead and put in parentheses 126. Raise to do, and this is the uh, carrot button underneath the clear button, so I'm going to go ahead and press that. And because 16 is a fraction, I'm going to go ahead and put that into parentheses as well, just to have good habits. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter that, and our approximation of that would be 2.239, and we'll round it to, I think it said two decimal places, but let's check it out really quick. This is, oh, yep, round to two decimal places, so we'll round that to 2.24. There we go. All right, let's go into B. Uh, we're once again going to put this into the calculator, so I'm going to clear what we just did. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to show you actually where it is first. We're going to go to math and we're going to use number five, but notice that it has this X. So before you start, we're going to actually put four representing the fourth root. So we're going to go ahead and quit out of here. So now you know where that is. We're going to press the four button first, and then when we go back to second, actually it was just math, sorry, just press math. We're going to go to number five, and that is the calculator's way of knowing that you want the fourth root. And I'm going to go ahead and open parentheses and put 10 in there again. Sometimes it's difficult with this clicker. There we go. And that's the fourth root of 10. So it's 1.78. We're going to round that up. All right, let's look at the last one. This is the eighth root of 16. Go ahead and try it really quick. As I'm going to be doing it too. So eight, and then we're going to go to math go to number five, and then in parentheses, put the value that we're looking for. And there it is, eighth root of 16. We have 1.41. We won't round that up, considering that it's a four and as the number after that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my calculator away. And let's kinda go into 
Example number six. Example number six is uh, solving these equations, and we're going to go ahead and round our answers to de two decimal places when we need to. So I'm going to go ahead, let's pick some nice colors. Here's a blue. Um, we're going to solve them as if this was just an x. So if you had 3x plus 2 equals 5, we all know we would subtract a 2 first and divide it by 3. We're going to do the same thing here uh, and get that x to the fourth by itself. So we're going to, I'm going to delete this so you don't get confused. Uh, we're going to subtract a 2. We get 3x to the fourth equals 3 divided by 3 on both sides. We get x to the fourth equals 1. Now, in order to undo a fourth power, what we would have to do is take the fourth root of it. And what ends up happening is the fourth root and the fourth power cancel each other out. And you are left with just an x equals. Uh, a fourth root of 1 is actually plus or minus 1. So So a simple rule that we might know, and we've already done these with square roots, is a square root, a fourth root, or aka an even root, okay, creates plus or minus in our final answer. So this does not happen with odd roots, but it definitely does with even roots. It's a basic rule that we should definitely highlight into our notes. Make sure you have that written down. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now, in order to do this, the first thing we have to do in order to get to the x is get rid of the power, uh, the fifth power. And the only way you can get rid of the fifth power is to do fifth root. So we're going to go ahead and take the fifth root on both sides. A fifth root is an odd root, therefore we won't get a plus or minus. Uh, but we do want to break down this 32. So I'm going to go ahead and break down this 32. Well, I know 8 times 4, and that even breaks down to 2 times 2 times 2. And then the 4 gives us another 2. So hopefully you see 5 of a kind, therefore the fifth root of 32 is just positive 2. And we are left with what's inside the parentheses, x plus 3. I know some of you are going, do we have to write the parentheses? The answer to that is no, you don't have to. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm about to delete mine just so that it doesn't look it so complicated. And we're left with x plus 3 equals 2, subtract the 3 on both sides, and we have x equals negative 1. Okay, let's continue. We have two more problems I want to go over, and then we're done. Uh, we're going to go ahead in this C. Uh, we want to get to the X again, but we've got to get rid of this negative. This is actually negative 1. So we're going to go ahead and divide by negative 1 on both sides. And we're left with X minus 1 raised to the 7th power is equal to negative 125. Now, in order to get rid of a 7th power, we're going to go ahead and take the 7th root on both sides. And we are left with X minus 1 equals seventh root of negative 125. Now I'm going to ignore the negative for right now and just break down the 125. I know 125 breaks down to 25 times 5 and this 25 breaks down to 5 times 5 and I'll bring this 5. Hopefully you see that there is not, we don't have anything that's 7 of a kind so therefore we can't simplify that so we'll leave it alone. Um, and the last thing we would have to do is x equals Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just show you. Oh, we got to add this one. Uh, notice that this is a seventh root, so there is no plus or minus, so we're just going to go ahead and write one plus seventh root of negative 125 will be our final exact answer. This is an exact answer. And you can put that onto the calculator to get an approximate. All right, um, what I want you to do is for D, I want you to go ahead and try this on your own. Um, this is definitely a problem that we're going to be going over uh, the next time that we see you. So enjoy it, and we will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.